Speeding up your Lightroom editing process is quite important, especially if you're a wedding photographer or you shoot huge sets of photos in one go and come home with 2000 photos or maybe more and you have to get them out to your client or online wherever you want to put them but you want to do it fast and here are my five tips to improve your editing workflow they help me quite substantially i hope they do the same for you so tip number one it's about the white balance keep your white balance static don't use the automatic white balance changing from sunlight to shadows and it improves your workflow if you keep it static for a certain set of lighting of course if the lighting changes you have to change your white balance but if it's quite static keep it there because then in Lightroom we can put like a bunch of edits copy them onto a photo and we don't have to adjust the white balance in every single photo and that will speed up your workflow quite substantially tip number two is about the probably most tedious work and that's going through all those photos and selecting the photos you actually want to edit and get out to your clients so if you have a set of 2000 photos that can be quite annoying but I got two methods I use to to get through those photos fast. Version number one is the yes selection. So I would use that if I know I have like 10 or 15, 20 hero shots I want to have, and I would only want to select these photos and edit those. And how I do this is, let's go into Lightroom. I go through my photos and I'll say, yeah, oh yeah, I love that, P, pick. And then we go further through and say, yeah, that's perfect, P for pick, and pick the photos like that. You probably knew this already. Now you can filter the photos for the pics and edit those. But being realistic, you probably have to select way more photos than that. And this is where the no selection comes in. So the no selection is you reject the photos. You can reject photos in Lightroom with X. What I would do is I would go through the photos and firstly reject all the photos that are technically bad. So not in focus, overexposed, bad composition, aesthetically unpleasing, whatever. Just get rid of those photos in the first place. And then I would do a second run where I would select between like if you have say a portrait of a couple and you got like five or six or seven photos and then you have to select which one is the best one the eyes are open yada 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 and then deselect all the photos or reject all the photos you don't want and get that done and here comes in another cool tip if you have an ipad download the lightroom app for your ipad and then sync those photos to your adobe cloud and once you did that you can come in to lightroom mobile and go down here to the star menu. I'm not sure how it's called. Here you can look at all your photos and then on the right side of the screen, if you pull up and down, you can reject or pick the photos and on the other side, you can star them. I don't use the star system really, but you can pick and reject the photos right here. And you could do that from your couch while you're on the train or wherever you are. And that saves you quite a lot of time. And that gets us to tip number three. Think about your shoot in sets. So you probably have settings where the lighting is quite similar. The colors are quite similar and you could edit those pictures in a bulk. So you would develop a preset or do your basic corrections, some color work and stuff like that. And then you can copy and paste them onto that set. And I would always advise you to work in those sets. It makes it way, way easier to just pick a hero shot, get that edited, dialed in where you want it, paste that to the other photos and then tweak them to get them perfect. And here comes in the next tip, tip number four, which actually improved my workflow substantially. And those are the masks. The masks in Lightroom, they can make your photos really pop and make them shine. But the problem usually is with masks, that if you copy and paste them onto other photos, you always have to move them around, adjust them and paint them in new because they're not dynamic. They don't get reapplied to every photos with the exception of the new AI masks. They got added like last version, but they got hugely improved this version that came out a few weeks ago. Let's dig into that. So as you can see, I got four photos right here. They're quite similar uh, with different framing. And let's say I want to edit all these four photos with masks and make them shine. So these are raw files. There's nothing done to them already. So when you go into the marks section, you already see it's looking for me. So it's searching for people in the frame. Here it's selected me and now it's detecting the person's features. So it detects my face, skin, body, skin and all that stuff. If you have like close-ups and portraits, you also get like teeth. Uh, the white things in your eyes, the iris and stuff like that. It gets more detailed even there. Let's say I want a mask for my face skin. So let's create that. And I'll do just some crazy edits right here so we can see the changes I've made and don't take it serious what I'm doing here. 
aesthetically. Um, so let's say we got my face dialed in where I want it. I'll do some sky select because I want to do some edits to the sky. Okay, as we can see, the mask is not perfect. We could fix that with a brush quite easily, but I'll just leave it as it is right here for demonstration purposes. And let's do some edits to the sky. Make it a little bit pop. Let's get the lose that haze a little bit. Oh yeah, like nice and dramatic. And have it like that. And I'll go in and say, all right, I want also the background. There we go, we have the background and I want to deselect the sky because we got the separate mask for that already. So we go to subtract and select the sky. And as we can see, it deselect the sky and we can do the edits to our background right here. Oh yeah, we need some crazy colors in here. There we go, lovely looking awesome. <laughs> And yeah, so we could do all our masks, different style and stuff. Here comes the interesting part. Once we say, okay, we want to reapply those masks to the different photos, we can press Control Shift C, and that brings up the copy settings dialog. Now we can select our mask. Yeah, we want to copy those. And then we go into the next photo and say, all right, Control Shift V, paste our settings. And what you can see right here, Lightroom is reanalyzing the new photo, searching for my face skin, for the sky, the background, and stuff like that. And we'll now adjust the masks to the new photo and apply the settings appropriately. So there we go, you can see it right there. It selected the sky right here, there the sky, the background and my face skin. And it does that dy dynamically. We can also do that to the next two photos, select those two and go command shift V and it pastes the photos on there. It will take some time to reanalyze the photo, but it pastes the settings appropriately. So like in here, the next one, it's a pretty much more close up, but it also selects my skin my face skin, the background, the sky. Of course, it's not perfect. You always have to go in and check, have the mask selected the right stuff. Do I have to retouch them a little bit? But it saves you a lot of time, especially if you have like group photos and stuff like that and the sky is blown out a little bit too much and you want some color adjustments in the background, you can apply those settings to the AI masks and then just copy and paste them to the other photos and it will adjust appropriately. And you don't have to do it by hand, paint them in or do gradients or whatever. You of course can do that also, but I think this is quite powerful to get quite extensive edits, but you can copy and paste them on a bunch of photos and really make them pop. I think this will save a lot of time. I wish I had these features three years ago when I was shooting more weddings, would have saved me a lot of time, but well, here we are, you can use it now. And this brings me to tip number five. So I actually discovered this actually a year ago, something like that, because I started doing quite heavily video editing. And in video editing, you have to use shortcuts because if you're not using shortcuts, you will waste a lot of time. You will take twice or three times as long to edit a video without using the shortcuts. And once I started using the shortcuts there, I started using shortcuts in Lightroom. And crazy thing is it speeds up your workflow immensely. You might wouldn't think it because you're always sliding around the sliders, but just pick and choosing the tools with shortcuts speeds up your workflow so much. Like for example, right here, we hit R for reframe and then we can like, yeah, crop in the photo as one. Yeah, that's perfect. Go in M for masks and press K. So it does a new mask layer with a brush and we can paint in whatever we want. This is so much faster than just selecting all the tools with the mouse and add mask and yada yada yada. This speeds up the workflow quite substantially. And I would advise you go to Google, um, look up the shortcut list for Lightroom Classic or Lightroom CC, whatever you're using, and start trying to memorize all these shortcuts and start implementing them in your workflow. And I promise you, they will improve your workflow. You will be faster using the shortcuts. And with that said, let me know in the comments down below if I missed something. Let me know what are your tips that improve your workflow. And if you like this video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. And if you want to see more, just hit that subscribe button. I appreciate it. With that said, see you in the next one. Bye-bye.